So we're here today to talk about integration. And um, I'm a field guy, and you're the go-to guy for integration at, at Bosch Security. And I've constantly come to you with challenges that customers give to me about integration. Right. So whenever I call you and say, Brad, I need some help with integration, what, uh, what comes to mind with you? Well, integration is a, is a broad topic, and I think uh, everybody would have a different definition of what integration exists or defined, is defined as. Um, for, for Bosch and where we're at today, it's, it's almost virtually all software, but I think that the trends or the history of integration is, is simply connecting systems, right? Um, at its most basic level, it's, it could be wire-to-wire -wire connectivity of two different devices. It can be uh, and making them work together. And the point is that in isolation, a system or a device has a purpose and uh, interaction between the two is something that is a necessity in today's world. So cause and effect. I have something that's occurring in system one and I want system two to react Correct. to that in a given way, that's integration. Right. Um, in the old days, it was very simple. You said wire to wire. Uh, in the security side of things, that was either a contact closure mm -hmm. um, or in a, more, uh, in a more specific way, maybe data, like a 232 data format or a 485 right. Right. and stuff like that. Um, in integration today, where do you see integration moving to in terms of, of the security industry? Sure. Um, so we've, we've come from a very hardware-oriented world where uh, sensors are connected to physical systems or whatever, and we're moving to a much more software-oriented world um, where Internet of Things is the big buzzword today, sure. and big data and, and deep learning. Um, it's, it's moving to an IP-based system, and it's moving to software control of those integrations. One of the important pieces of that, though, is that the device, we call it the edge, the further out the device is, the actual device, the sensor, um, has to right. be a lot smarter in today's world so that it works with, as you said, the Internet of Things, right? Right, right. And so with smart devices, uh, you have to have the capability for that device that's as far out on the edge of the system to be smart enough to be able to communicate back with the, with the head end so that from an integration standpoint, you can use that not just for one system, but, but possibly others. Right. Yeah, what you see is the intelligence is moving from the central system out to the edge. And so uh, the, the edge sensors are getting uh, more processing power, more capabilities, more ability to do uh, learning on their own and be able to um, interpret and do things on the edge themselves and then just feed back information back to the central system as necessary. Um, they're interacting with each other on the edge, they're interacting with the main systems, but those, all of those interactions require integration at some level. Okay. Um, one of the other questions that I see that comes up a lot is when I talk about integration to customers, customers say, do I, do I really need integration? My system really isn't that big or it's not, it's not that complex. In your world of integration, what do you see trending in terms of the size of the systems that are that are being integrated together? Um, I don't see any necessary limits uh, to size. Uh, even the smallest systems, the small guys, have edge devices that need to be integrated into their systems. Um, the more integration that exists, the more flexibility you have in the types of systems and the types of, um, I guess, uh, solutions that you can have for your business. Um, along with that, it probably comes uh, what specific kinds of customers could take advantage of integration, and and by that I mean um, uh, vertical markets. What what vertical markets do you see that may be starting to use integration to their favor? Um, I, I think every. Every aspect of the industries, um, vertical markets, anything, have, are being influenced positively by the integration steps and trends that we're taking. Um, I don't see any particular uh, vertical needing it more or less. Um, simply put, 
Um, isolated systems are on the decline and integrated systems are on the, on the rise. And the more integratable we're able to make our systems, the more options our customers have and the more strengths that they'll be able to do to provide the necessary things that they want for their customer base. Um, and that kind of leads me right into the next question, which is which systems in, and specifically to the, to the security market, but maybe a little bit out of that because our, our products not all relate directly to a security locking a door and looking who's on the other side, but right. the security industry is kind of getting into some, into some other facets of life. Mm -hmm. what, what systems do you see being integrated together? Well, I can give you an example. So like today, uh, or historically, security systems have been very isolated to ensuring the physical security of a building. But uh, one of the trends that we see now is operationally, the businesses are looking to use the data gathered by these security systems into improving their operations, whether it be market da marketing data um, or retail system, we're able to uh, connect the systems now so that you can know you know, the heat maps of your organization, of the, the way people are going through the stores. People flow in. People flow. Or product flow. Uh, product yeah. flow, uh, where people are standing, where people are stopping, um, the count So maybe even not people. as a positive, but maybe that's a negative because it, it keeps flow from happening the way you'd like it to. Yeah, yeah, but it allows you to make business decisions rather sure. than security decisions. It allows you to make business decisions about how you want to change things. So taking what would normally be a, a separate system, a security system, that had one of it, that had one purpose before, which was right. making sure the doors were closed or uh, enunciating when they were open, when they weren't supposed to be, right. or capturing video or something to that effect, controlling who comes and goes in and out of the door, but then turning that into a, a profit-based information right. because there's already a sensor on the door, there's already a camera there, there's already a, a, people already have a card in their hands right. to open a door. So we're taking that information and sort of using it outside of the premise of security, but maintaining the premise of security while giving it a, a second use. Absolutely. And, and in that, it switches the cost structure from a capital expense into an operational expense, which from a business standpoint is very intriguing. So one final question and, and thought. Mm -hmm. When we start to talk about integration, what positives do putting systems on a network or a common network bring to integration? Uh, well, you get the commonality aspect of it. And I think with that, you get an opportunity for standardization in how you communicate. Um, so with that standardization, um, I can now implement something in one way and a lot of people have the ability to integrate to that uh, in that same way and you get multiple levels of communication. And analyze, analogize this to languages, right? Um, the common business language is English and that has broadened out worldwide and globally now um, to where English is used in the world of business. Um, all different people speak all different kinds of language, but for business, we standardize on the idea of using English. In the IP world, we're standardizing on common languages so that we can communicate with each other over the IP. And when I say we, the devices that are on the systems. And, and on that network, it allows them to coexist so they're not walking over each other or um, banging into each other causing problems of communication. And you said there's common languages um, in, in our industry. Security is a big industry. Mm -hmm. um, Building controls are, is somewhat of a piece of it. There's common languages in building control. Uh, in, in data, there's specific languages in, in data. Standardization of a, of a video language is one of the things that's occurred over the past couple of years and has gotten a lot better. Um, what is that common language of video? So the common communication language within the video industry today, in the security video industry, is on BIF. And uh, we utilize that in order to be able to um, openly communicate between uh, video devices, video systems, and other types of systems that exist. So allowing the edge devices to communicate with the system in general. 
and systems communicate with each other. Okay. Yeah.